If I were starting a Google Ads campaign in 2023, this is what I'd do. And in seven steps, I'm gonna walk you through from start to finish the entire process we use to build highly effective search campaigns that generate good results. Now, what I want to start off by saying is that most people are very overwhelmed by the entire process of Google Ads. Google Ads can be very scary as there are a lot of different settings, there's a lot of different campaigns, and I wanted to create a video that helps simplify the entire process so we're not forgetting anything and we have some type of structure to allow us to actually run through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps from start to finish of our campaign and have good results long term. So without further ado, let's start off with number one, which is set clear goals. And what I mean by this is actually getting out a pen and paper or, or on a spreadsheet or in you know Microsoft Word, we need to write this down. So this is important. We gotta write this down first because it's generally easier to assess something on a piece of paper than in your own head. Uh, and sometimes we forget things, we're human, we make mistakes. It's okay. So what we wanna do is write down our goals. What do we want to achieve in this a campaign? Why are we using Google Ads in the first place? Because because if we don't really want anything, there's no point in spending money on Google Ads. What do we want? And that could be leads, that could be sales, that could be website views. There's a lot of things here. For this campaign, we're going to be going after leads for service-based businesses. This could also be used for sales on e-commerce. If you're going for website views or some other type of accomplishment here, this video is probably not going to be for you, but you might learn a few things anyway, so you might wanna stick with it. Up to you completely. But what we need to do now is actually write down our list of services we have to offer. This could be AC repair, this could be heating repair for a pool installation, this could be fiberglass pools, vinyl pools, for a moving company, it could be long distance, local distance, whatever it is, we're gonna write down a long list of all of our service we have to offer. And then we're going to essentially rank them by what our most profitable ones are and what our most time effective ones are. And the reason we wanna do this is we want to go after our best services possible. There's a great principle called the 80-20 rule and that it states that 20% of the inputs account for 80% of the outputs. And to simplify this in business terms, 20% of your services are generally gonna generate 80% of your profits. What we want to do is identify this 20%, so it could be a certain service, and then we are actually going to double down with this on Google Ads. Because once we actually get into Google Ads, there's a lot of stuff we can do and we don't want to get confused. We wanna have this straightened out right at the beginning, that way we know what to do and what not to do. When we're building out the actual campaign, we know what services to go after and what services not to go after. When we're optimizing the campaign, we know what keywords to add and what keywords to add as negatives that we don't want to target. So once we have figured out these actual services and which ones we want to go after, normally I recommend one or two, not more than that, because you're gonna start getting confused and it's gonna be overwhelming. Then we can start doing our keyword research, which is step number two. And this allows us to actually find all the search terms people are typing in on Google and which ones we're going to go after and which ones we are not going to go after. I created an entire video on how to do keyword research. It's quite in depth, shows you essentially every tool and setting we use just to simplify the process, make it quicker, and then export it to a Google spreadsheet spreadsheet and essentially allows us to go after high buying intent keywords. When we're doing keyword research, we want to go after keywords that show buying intent. What this means is when someone types in a keyword, it shows that they're actually in the market to buy. If we are going after pool installation, we don't really want to go after keywords like pools. We want to go after keywords that are like pool installation near me or pool installation companies near me that show that the person on the other end of the screen is actually in the market to buy our services. Something like pools may convert, but it may also not convert because the person might be just looking for pictures of pools or something like that. Once we've created a list of all these high buying intent keywords that we wanna go after and are relevant to our main service, we can then export them to a spreadsheet and start organizing them. And this is gonna be the third part, structuring the entire account. And what this looks like is essentially inside of a spreadsheet, we're going to create a whole bunch of ad groups. They're not very difficult to do. I've created an entire video on this as well on how to structure the account. If you wanna watch that, completely fine. And it essentially allows you to group them into little ad groups that are going to be based on intent rather than keywords. We don't really care about keywords anymore as Google has changed a whole bunch of things on the back end when it comes to actual match type. So single keyword ad groups are having a ad group for every single keyword is no longer relevant because the match types are essentially very lenient at this point. So what we want to do is create ad groups that are intent-based. People are looking for a pool installation company near me. This could be 
companies that have pools near me, this could be pool installation companies near me, in-ground pool installation companies near me, all these things are slightly different in terms of the keyword, but all of their intent is the exact same. So we wanna group them by intent. Like I said, I have an entire video on this and I'd recommend watching it if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes I confuse myself, so it's okay. But after we've grouped all of this, and by the way, we're normally gonna go for less ad groups, but more keywords in every single ad groups to optimize using dynamic keyword insertion. Like I said, if you watch the video, It'll explain it, but essentially we want as many keywords in those ad groups to actually trigger to replace our headlines as possible. This is just brand new to Google Ads. It's a great strategy and it works really well. After we've done that, we have the option to assign landing pages to each and every one of these ad groups. We want our landing pages to be as unique and as specific to these ad groups as possible and these keywords. If you don't have your landing pages built out yet, completely fine, no need to worry. I prefer building the landing pages after the account as then I can look at the actual ad groups, but some people have them already. You could assign the actual every ad group to its own landing page right now if you prefer, but it's completely up to you, no need to worry. Now, once we've properly structured our account, now comes the actual building of the account. We have the entire structure laid out. It's easy to understand. We know what ad groups we have. We know what keywords we have. All we have left is essentially to hook up the settings and to build the actual ads. When it comes to building the settings, I have an entire video on how to build a search campaign. It's a little old. Uh, however, it's based off themed ad groups as opposed to intent-based ad groups, a little different, but all the settings are still applicable. I'd still recommend using maximize clicks for the first 30 conversions and then switching over to actual target CPA. That way you can optimize the account. You can get more uh, progression and success through Google's AI once it has enough data, but only after you actually gather at least 30 conversions. People argue on this number. I like 30, uh, but that's something I would definitely look at. Search partners, that is optional for a lot of people. If you have struggles with the actual amount of search volume, you might wanna use search partners. If you don't, you might not want to use it. We also have a brand new Google Ads course just for search campaigns, came out like literally last week. Something that you might be interested in if you want the entire process documented. You can literally watch me over the shoulder make an account from scratch and then go into just something I wanted you guys to know. When it comes to building the actual ads, I have an entire video on ad building. Uh, we also have the Google Ads Done For You bundle, which is a long list of already made headlines, descriptions, which you can essentially copy and paste. Completely up to you which one you wanna go with, but that essentially will save you a lot of time. One thing I would recommend when it comes to building ads is generally having three ads in every single ad group. The reason for this is you're going to allow Google a whole bunch of headlines, a whole bunch of descriptions to A-B test with, and it's just going to A-B test all day long and eventually find a very good combination for you. Are you going to have the very best combination right off the bat? No, you'll probably have to do a couple uh, variations of this, and then you'll get much better results uh, with our click-through rate, which will in turn increase expected click-through rate, which will in turn help with quality score, which will lower our cost per click which will then allow us more sales and more leads. And that's essentially what we want. We want more success in the account. So it is worth definitely adding all these ads. Some people argue that we should only use a few headlines and then we should actually A-B test the ads ourselves. I don't think most people are built for that. I think uh, most people are gonna forget about it and they're not gonna be in the account every day optimizing this. So I think going with three ads and yes, it may take a little bit longer to optimize instead of going with like five headlines, but generally this acts as a great fail safe and it will generally give you a much better set of results as opposed to only having one ad with a few headlines. So please use 15 out of 15 headlines, four to four descriptions, three ads in every single ad group. This will generally give you the best results, especially if you're new to Google ads. Now moving on to number five, building landing pages. Now this is something super important inside Google ads as websites, I essentially wanna give you a good statistic here. Websites convert anywhere in our our experience from zero to 10%. And it's like 0.2% to 10% if you wanna be more specific. But this is okay. So out of 100 people, we're gonna get anywhere from zero to 10 people convert into a lead. Landing pages convert anywhere from 20 to 40%. So out of 100 people who come to your website or landing page, you'll convert 20 to 40 of them. So literally with a simple change of a website slash landing page, you can double, triple, quadruple results overnight. If you're looking for a landing page software, I definitely recommend checking out Landingly. It's awesome, it's super cheap, and it provides great results. It's quick to load, it's simple to set up with all your landing pages. If you're looking on how to actually build these, we have a 
entire video on how to build highly effective landing pages. I'll link that up above. We also have a course that's extremely extensive on landing pages and essentially what you want to look for. You want to look for simplicity. You want to look for speed. And you essentially want to give the customer all the reasons to buy on this landing pages as quickly and as easily as possible. Don't use complex language. Use simple grade eight language. The vast majority of people do not care about language. They care about getting their problem solved. So please answer the problem as quickly and as effectively as possible. Give them a simple call to action that reflects your ad and you're going to do very well. Once we have done that, we can actually link up all of these landing pages to the individual ad group. So if we want to create a landing page for fiberglass pools, we can. If we want to create a landing page for in-ground, vinyl, uh, above ground pools, we can. That way, every landing page is slightly different. It's slightly more specific. And we're going to see Google Ads give us a higher landing page experience because of that. And then we're going to get a higher quality score, which lowers cost per click, which gives us more leads, which gives us more account success overall. So very, very important. Plus, we have a massive conversion rate boost. So please use landing pages. Like I said, landing is cheap. Use landing, it's awesome. Moving forward, once we have set up our landing pages, we've made them specific to our actual ad groups and everything's essentially linked up. All we have to do left is two things. One is conversion tracking. This is super, super important and there's a lot of ways to do conversion tracking. Now you may be saying, why do I really need conversion tracking? Well, one is to actually see the results in your account and if you're getting any leads. Two is actually to feed this data to Google's AI, which we can use to optimize with later. Now, why is this important? Google's AI is really amazing at figuring out what customers are going to convert and what customers aren't. And much better than a human can, by the way, uh, substantially better. That's why manual CPC bidding strategy, enhanced CPC, these things are a dinosaur relic. They don't work nearly as well as AI because AI can just see all of these determining factors behind the screen, like demographics, audiences, day of the week, time, all this stuff that a human can't, AI can do a lot better and can do a lot quicker. So if we feed this a whole bunch of really good data, it's gonna have much better results and we're gonna see much better results inside of our account. So something very important to do. Now, how do we actually install conversion tracking? And there's a ton of ways. I have a video on how to set up all of the different call tracking inside of Google Ads. You could also use a software like CallRail for tracking. When it comes to the actual snippet and looking at form submissions and making sure someone converts into a lead and tracking that back into an actual, your Google Ads account, you could use Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, combination of that, and then import it back into the actual Google Ads account. You could also just use the Google Ads conversion tracking tag. There's a lot of stuff you can do. And I don't want to go super into the weeds here, but I have an entire video on how to actually add the snippet. Uh, if you're just doing normal landing pages, that's generally all you'll need. That's a little bit of an older video, and there's probably newer ones out there, but I'll link it up above just in case. But we definitely need some sort of conversion tracking to track our leads, to track our sales. If we have any sales, maybe it's just leads, and also to track any phone calls. Super, super important that most people miss because 50% or more of your conversions might come from phone calls. Most people don't even track that. It's something super important to do. So please track every single conversion out there. Very, very vital to getting the most bang for your buck out of Google ads. Now the very final thing inside of Google ads is optimization. We need to optimize this account. And there's a lot of things inside this account we can optimize. And a lot of people will say, Matt, you don't need to use any sort of optimization. You don't know what you're talking about. I know you've been doing this forever, but you don't know what you're talking about. Google's AI is perfect. It will optimize for you. And yes, I do believe Google's AI does a wonderful job at optimizing. However, if you've ever used a site like ChatGPT, which has AI on it, you learn very quickly that AI is not perfect and it needs help with the overall strategy. It's very good at the nitty gritty stuff, but the overall account strategy and the goal of what we want to achieve inside of our account, it's not very good at. So what we need to do is actually recorrect this essentially giant machine that is the AI every so often. In the first week, we kind of want to be in the account very regularly, looking at the search term analysis, adding those negatives, making sure the actual keywords have a good quality score. If they don't, building out new ad groups to support that with better ads and better landing pages. There's a ton of stuff we can do to, to optimize this. That's why I created the optimization checklist for you. It's completely free. I'll link it down below. It walks you through on what to do inside your account on a weekly, monthly, three months basis. And then it also allows you to jot down your results. So you are making progress. Pilots use checklists. I use a checklist. I'm certainly not as smart as a pilot, but you get the point. Make sure you have something in the backup because people tend to forget things. And I like just having a nice little checklist to go, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. It makes life so much easier. And you don't got to stress about it week after week. So that is how I would set up a Google ads account step-by-step -step in 2023 for best results. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer it. And I will do my best to get back to you on that. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care. And I wish you all well.